This is a portion of chips. Not only are they lovely, everybody around the world knows that it's what us British people live on. Not only are they lovely, they are cheap, and hence the term as cheap as chips. This is the Sinis SMXE. It's a 125cc motorcycle with 15 horsepower and costs £3,400. It's about the closest thing to the term cheap as chips as you can find it in the motorcycle world. But the question I have is that a motorcycle that is cheap, can it be any good? Well, in this video, we're gonna put it to the test and find out if it really is. So now, ladies and gentlemen, for the all-important 0-60 test, let's see what this snarling 15 horsepower engine can do. Come on! 53! Come on, baby! And 60! Yes! I have no idea how fast that was, but we'll put it up on the screen. Let's see how fast she'll go. This is properly straight dual carriageway, so no hills up or down. Come on! Come on! Come on! We're flat to the throttle stop. Yeah. 60 is all she's got. So, first impressions of the Sinis SMXE. You know what? If I got this as a 17 year old as my first buy, I'd be absolutely over the moon. It weighs a genuine 140 kilos with fuel in it because we weighed it before. So, so it's quite lightweight. Uh, it means you can do a little bit of off roading with it. And you can ride on the road. Seems to handle pretty well. Brakes work okay. You know, what more can you ask for in, in terms of a, you know, a pretty basic road bike, really? That's uh, learn illegal. Uh, so she will comfortably do 60 miles an hour. Uh, and she will get an absolute max top speed of 70, either on a ridiculously long straight in good conditions, no wind coming against you, or on a bit of a downhill. Other things, yeah, mirror's quite good, switches work fine, dash is great, it's got a fuel gauge. I'm not actually sure you get a fuel gauge even on the latest Multistrada V4. So that's quite impressive. Let's see if she's got the go. Come on! Yes! One down, one nil. So, the Sinis SMXE. Let me take my helmet off and give you some first little thoughts. Obviously we're riding it uh, in the beginning of January. The weather has been absolutely shocking. Um, but it's a, 
you know, a bike like this is about getting out there and doing it in any weather and going off and enjoying yourself or getting where you need to go and so on and so forth. You know, if, if you're looking at this from an experienced motorcyclist and, you know, typically we're riding like competition enduro bikes and 200 horsepower super bikes. So obviously a 15 horsepower single cylinder 125 doesn't really, um, can't be compared to any of that sort of stuff. But taking it as it is, do you know what? It's a fun little bike. You can hold 60 mile an hour, um, pretty much going up a hill, which is really good. It'll top out about 70 mile an hour. You can pull wheelies on it, you can do burnouts, you can do skids, you can, uh, you know, have a bit of fun with it as well. It's actually been quite a good, uh, fun bike and I've been pretty impressed with it. But the road going setting of this machine is actually only half the story because as this bike is what it is, it's got long travel suspension, good ground clearance, tall ride height and so on, we can actually take it off road. And the claim is that we can go trail riding and uh, enjoy a bit of that sort of stuff. So that's exactly where we're gonna head next. We're going to that mountain over there. We're gonna try and get up it. Keep watching to see how we get on. over the GoPro's picking this up but you know this is sort of like loose rock and uh, quite steep as well and quite jagged <laughs> that is a bit much but hey do you know what she's coping let's see if I can make up that hard a bit easy Oi. <laughs> Yeah, bugger. We'll try the steeper couple of drop-offs. Normally I'd go up these as well, but I don't think she's quite got the uh, the power. I'll go down it easy enough. Easy peasy. That is quite impressive for a little one, two, five, three grand bike. You can pretty much do most things on. Okay, so we've had a good ride out on the road. We've done ourselves a bit of trail riding up here as well. And now we're gonna get out of this awful weather because I tell you what, it's been shocking all day and it's blowing a gale right now. So we're gonna go back to the studio, get warmed up, have a bit of reflection, and then we're gonna follow on with the debrief. So now we've had time to reflect on the SMXE125 to take myself back as a 17 year old. And if this was my first mode of transport, you know, to get me to college, to get me to work, to see a girlfriend, if I was lucky enough to have one, this would be absolutely fantastic. And it would open the world up to me in terms of getting where I want to uh, go to on time and just being able to get out and about without my mum and dad. And that, this bike, totally nails and it does it with a bit of fun in between. Um, the other thing that this bike does that probably a lot of like Learn Illegal 125s don't do is give you that ability to uh, go and explore a different part of motorcycling as well which is obviously the off-road riding and trail riding as well which actually this bike does a really great job of. Um, we went on the trails yesterday, had a really good time doing it and it performed great, you know, in line with what it is and who, who it's designed for. I think it did a really, really good job. So despite the fact that I've given the bike a big thumbs up, there are a couple of downsides that you need to consider. The first one is that the fuel economy isn't great. Um, I did ride the bike flat out pretty much everywhere um, on test, which is probably why the fuel economy hasn't been great but I got just over about 60 miles and the tank is sort of pretty much empty. So the fuel economy isn't great and we should be getting more for a 125cc bike. 
Um, second thing is that, you know, clearly this bike is a, a, a cheaper alternative. Um, and at some points you can see that. For example, when I was cleaning it yesterday at the power washer, um, basically I blew some of the stickers off. These stickers that make a part of the livery here should be higher quality. Um, they should be stuck on better or lacquered over as well. Also, this part of the exhaust, um, there was like an exhaust guard. That literally just fell off. It just, it just blew off when it was on the road. Um, and I didn't go back to find it because it could have been anywhere. So anyway, that's uh, not on the bike anymore. The other thing that I'd really like to see is slightly bigger foot pegs. I mean, they're absolutely fine, but certainly if you're taking it off-road, I'd like them just a bit more chunky, really. Finally, I think um, the, the bike's just got a little bit of a weird ergonomic thing going on. Um, it's got like a full-on like enduro height seat, which clearly may put a couple of people off if you're not tall enough. But what it has got is this seat that kind of comes up like this. And when you're going down sort of steep declines, it does mean that you can't quite get your bum where you'd want it to be because it kind of knocks on the back here. And then that kind of couples with handlebars that perhaps are not quite high enough and could be a touch wider as well. I think if in future models, and I'm not suggesting that anybody would really be customizing this bike because it's not the kind of bike that it is, but in future models, if this part was less sort of sloped up, that would be a good thing and combined with slightly taller bars that were a little bit wider as well. So other than that, I've had a really fun time on the SMXE. And I suppose to answer the question, can you have thrills on a really cheap bike? Absolutely, yes you can. So really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, comment and subscribe and check out all the Nox gear that we use to protect ourselves on test. We'll see you next time.